I would basically just come in, find out what my target is for the day, press the button, just go, and the first piece of content, boom, it's just there on the screen in front of you. You take a look, you make a decision, you press a couple of buttons, it goes away, and the next one loads, and the next one, and the next one. And you are seeing dead bodies, and murders, or people celebrating having killed somebody. Dogs being barbecued alive, and, and you are seeing these images. It took me a long time to understand how much this stuff had affected me. I never even believed in PTSD. I, th I thought it was just people being useless. And it's been very hard for me to find these really difficult emotional reactions when I talk about this stuff and I've had to be through therapy and um, take a lot of time just working on myself to, to get through this. I used to work for Facebook and my job was to spend eight hours a day looking at all the worst things that people post online so that you don't have to see it. Mark Zuckerberg had just announced he wanted to hire thousands and thousands more people to do this work. And I think they just needed bums on seats. So I was snapped up. They did ask me, you, know, you do understand that maybe occasionally you might see something that's a bit disturbing and they ask if you're okay with that but you don't have any experiential understanding of what that means. It's really difficult to quantify how much of it was of a particular type or how extreme it was. You would be able to quantify this, but, it, but these numbers are not available. Facebook have them, but as an employee, you're not entitled to find out what kind of harmful material you've been exposed to. I'm gonna guess it's between five and 10% of what you see every day is possibly potentially traumatizing. I can remember the first one that just was a, like a wow moment. And, and that was when we first started. I got this one one day and it's a super close up shot of a man just jerking off. But uh, I, I didn't want to reach forward, put my hand into that space to press the buttons to delete it. And eventually one of the girls did it. And then she picked up, uh, there was a packet of wet wipes on another desk for cleaning the desk. And she cleaned all the desk, the keyboard and her own hands before she went back to her desk. Thinking about that later, I realized that we really do feel like touched by what you see. And then a couple of weeks later, one of my colleagues got, got his first self-harming incident where somebody is cutting their wrist and seemed to be in imminent danger of committing suicide. We just heard this like shouting, this guy just shouting like, fuck, what do I do? I've got a suicide, what do I do? And he was in a complete panic because there's a life at risk right in front of him, right there and then. And your job is to protect people. Well, the guidelines are not guidelines. They're very, very strict, very precisely written rules. We've got definitions of harm versus injury versus violence. We've got clear definitions of what is hate speech and what isn't hate speech. Your head is swimming with all of these issues and, and things that you have to consider every time that you're confronted with this stuff. I think it would be easier to deal with the images if you weren't having to think about them so deeply. I worked uh, the evening shift, so I would start at 6 p.m., finish at 2, 2 o'clock in the morning. But then you would often wake up three, four hours later, you'd suddenly sit up in bed remembering a decision that you've made and realizing that you've made a mistake. Like, I've missed a nipple. You, you remember some image that you'd seen and you suddenly realized that there was a naked girl on one side or, or an ISIS flag in the background. So now it should have been deleted under the terrorism policy. So you're obviously replaying this stuff in your head unconsciously while you're asleep. But then you're not allowed to talk about your work with anybody. We've all signed non-disclosure agreements, the Facebook Omerta. We've all been told Again and again, don't ever tell anybody what your job is. There was a, a wellness team on site and they were responsible for resilience training and mental health issues, but they're not trained psychotherapists, psychologists, they're not mental health professionals. So you're at work and you get an email coming around saying, hey, we're having finger painting in the canteen this evening. 
I'm here to save the world. I'm looking at war crimes and, and child abuse. I haven't got time to go and go finger painting. So it, it was window dressing. The supports that were there were totally inadequate. For me, there was a creeping awareness and a loss of faith, a lot of hope. And it's just become this mindless drudgery where you've desensitized yourself from what you're seeing on the screen in front of you. But when I left, I was just relieved. And, and then I got a phone call from a journalist. Somebody had given them my number and she wanted to talk to me off the record like this about the job. And she asked me these questions that you've been asking me ab about the content, the stuff that you see. And it was the first time I had addressed that, that I, that I faced it and it completely overwhelmed me and I, I broke down and cried in a coffee shop. I was lost, I just didn't know what the fuck I was doing, what was going on, I was totally bewildered. You know, as, as I started to get my head around it and, and talk to specialists and doctors and people, I realized that this job had knocked me on my ass and I hadn't even realized it. Facebook denies that anybody could ever get PTSD. Nobody has been harmed, that's very explicit. And then there was a recording Somebody actually taped what Mark Zuckerberg was saying in an internal meeting with employees last year. And Mark Zuckerberg said, it's a little bit overdramatic. He, he just totally just dismissed all of the criticisms that have been made. It's denial. They don't want to know what's going on. And they'll say the right things, they say things that sound good, but they don't fucking care. And Mark Zuckerberg, I don't care what he's been told by other people, these stories have been repeated enough times now that he needs to go down onto the shop floor and see how people work day in, day out, see what's happening and talk to people who've been harmed and embrace the fact that he's got a problem he needs to solve.